We're going to go into a course now. And you'll see that this screen is a lot more user friendly. You have the course map here, and then you've got the information that is used either in the course library or in your print maps. So we can change our thumbnail image. So you've got an, uh, a gallery here of all the different fences. Let's have this one. can take a few moments to uh, upload the uh, image. Depends on the size of the image. So we've got our new image here. Uh, the event, uh, it's possible to organize your courses into different events here and that is something that is often necessary because when you upload from the Cross Country app, if you call your courses slightly different venue names, so you may have the MM Cup, the MM Cup 2018 or the Mitsubishi Motors Cup, then they will create three separate events which gets rather messy and hard to manage. So what you can do here is type in the name of the event that you want, find it in the list and then click on it and put your course into the correct event. You can change it to public here, you can add the optimum time or you can have the optimum time zero if you wish. Uh, this is the description that will appear in the library and then you can have the minimum time so some countries have 15 seconds under um, for speed faults, um, some have 20, so it's up to you to what, put what you need in there. The official distance can override the measured distance, and that is what will appear on your map. Um, and the uh, effort count is something for higher level courses, so if you have a fence which is a BC in the direct route, for example, we count that in the app as two efforts because it's B and C, but in fact it's one effort uh, for the official effort count. So you can override the effort count there so you may have say 45 instead of 47.